Women Everywhere. I'm your host Nan Gill and today our guest is Nancy Schneider. She is an attorney with her office in Washingtonville, New York. She studied at the University of Rhode Island and she got her master's at New Paltz, SUNY New Paltz, and she went to Pace Law School for her Juris Doctorate. She has a general practice and specializes in real estate adverse possession, boundary line disputes, and title issues, foreclosures, matrimonial and family law, wills and estates. She is a member of the 18B panel for family court. She serves as a court-appointed referee for foreclosure sales, and she's certified as a community dispute and parent-child mediator. She's the past president of the Board of Orange County Mediation Project. She's one of the founding board members of the Children's Rights Society. And she's a qualified as a divorce mediator and collaborative law group member. Nancy, so wonderful to have you here. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. She works with first home buyers. Yes, we First do time that. home buyers. And um, she's been in the real estate business for 35 years, yeah. so she has a lot of experience, yeah. and um, welcome, Nancy. Thanks, thanks. It's great to be here, and um, everything you said is true, so <laughs> <laughs> at she, least present path. There's good. more that's there's true more, that I left there's out. More there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so, if someone's thinking about purchasing their first home, yes. um, what advice would you give them? Before they even start, I think they need to shop for a person that they can relate to as an attorney. Um, price is not is not as important by any means as the personality or the people that you'll be working with as, as somebody that'll have a lot of questions. Right. Yeah. So I think that's important. And um, actually, your realtor is, is important because the realtor is... Uh, have to be on top of things and have right. to be able to advise you correctly and work with the attorney so that they know what's going on. So you need a good rapport. You need a team. You need a team. Yeah. So you have to yeah. establish your team. Establish your team right. and shop around. Don't be afraid just because you visit with one or make a phone call to somebody that you have to use them. Right. That doesn't, it isn't the case. You can actually go in for a, a free consultation. A lot of times, I think that uh, it's important for the attorney to sit down and just get to know their client and schmooze a little bit in the beginning, talk about the contracts, talk about what, what is included in the house, in other words, discuss everything that they know at this point about the house that they're looking to buy, whether there's a shed, whether there's a pool, whether they've heard any rumors about the house and so on. Right. Yeah. There's also something that I found as I've been in the title business for 35 right. years. And one thing that I think is very important is that you review the title policy of the seller. Well, if you're the, yes. If you're the buyer, right. you're the first time homeowner, you're, it's your attorney that, that tries to get um, uh, any kind of information from the seller's attorney right. that they can give you. Uh, old surveys, title, and so on, and and, and um, if they have them, certificates of occupancy, and so on, because the title company uh, has to review all of that stuff and do their own search. Right, and then if you look at the covenants and restrictions on a piece of property, you you can tell whether or not what you have in your heart's desire to do with your property. Yeah whether or not you can do it with your property or not. Right. By covenants and restrictions, it would be, there could be all kinds of things. There could be, um, in certain areas, you're not allowed to dig a new well, to have a new well. In other areas, there's a shared driveway. 
um, or other areas that you're restricted from having um, out, more outbuildings and, and so on. Right. I remember I met one gentleman who, in his heart's desire, was to have five acres of land and put a barn on there so he could put his horse on there. And he ended up buying the piece of property and putting up a barn and putting in his horse only to find out that there was a restriction on the deed that said there could be no agricultural animals on the property. Well, yes, that's a deed restriction, right. but doesn't somebody have to enforce that deed restriction? Right. I mean, usually the town is not going to do that if it's on your deed. If well, the town it was itself... a subdivision, so he had problems with his neighbors. He had to go around with all his neighbors and get them all to consent, consent to, the horse. to yeah. having a horse there. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've heard about somebody in New Jersey who had a, um, a, a what are those little pigs that the uh, Vietnamese oh, pig yeah, and the had little trouble. tiny ones. Yeah, <laughs> and they had trouble with that. So yeah. yeah, you do have to be careful what the zoning is. You have is to check that. What the, yeah, but you can't do that as a first-time home buyer. You can't just do that before you buy the house. That's up. To, that that happens. I guess if you wanted specifically to build a barn, you should check to see if that would Yeah, well, basically, time, by yeah. reviewing the seller's title policy, right. you can see if there's any covenants and restrictions in there beforehand. Yes. And getting a survey yeah. and yeah. looking at the survey to make sure that, right. you know. But as a first-time homebuyer, your attorney would be the one that tells you that and asks, exactly. asks you what you have planned for that piece of property. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, I've had people buy five acres, and the wife or, or the husband have never walked it. They don't even know what's there. And then there are others that it's extremely important. Right. Every tree stand and everything is there. So it just depends. On the and it's very interesting because there's all kinds of markers and everything yeah. on the property. Right. Like it might be to a blazed oak tree and then <laughs> along a stone wall. Right, in the description, yeah. Yeah, from where Jed used to tie his horse, if you some of the old ones, <laughs> and then chains and rods. Yeah, you know, the old description. The would old be description. Chains and rods. So uh, it's interesting to go back and read a lot of that stuff if you're going to get it. Right, yeah. and then you can check on the deed chain yeah. to see who owned your house before. Yeah, and you know maybe yeah. uh, what what it was used for before. Yeah, I often give um, as a seller's attorney. I often give my copy of the title report to the buyers, the new buyers, right. and then they, because they, they don't get a copy from their attorney usually, and I often just give the uh, yeah. the one that we get, just, first of all, my file is then lighter, and I won't, <laughs> I won't need it later. No, yeah, you don't. So. Yeah, so um, in the title report, they have um, a listing of all of the deeds that affect the property, if there's a easement that goes across right. it. And, a shared um, well, and a, a shared driveway, a, shared driveway. a right of way. Yeah. It yeah. could be your all neighbor could have a right of way over your property. Right. So you want to know all that before yeah. you you purchase or you before you decide on a property. Well, if you can get a chance to do that, most people don't get that until the they don't you don't even order the title until the contracts are signed and. Uh, they're on their way to getting their mortgage. Right. So That's why I'm encouraging now when real estate brokers list a property that they get a copy of the survey and a copy of the old title right. report. The report has all of the copies of the deeds and the easements yes. in it. Yes. Yeah. And if then they can get as the old a title buyer, report. before you, I know sometimes it gets a little crazy. Well, if sometimes, it's a buyer's market, you know, everybody yeah. wants to buy it before they even know where the property is. Yeah, but lines sometimes are. people uh, have owned the property for a, a number of years and the attorney is dead or they don't know who the attorney is and don't remember and they never had that information. They so never had the title always, report. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be up to the broker to find um, who that attorney is if they, if they look it up. Right. But I don't know if anybody keeps stuff for more than seven years anymore. Well, we track stuff down. Yeah. We do. And if you're thinking about, if it's a sizable investment, you can do a title search before you put yeah. your money down. You can order your title, and there are, um, like we do, um, we call it uh, title to go. We, we actually do title reports where we can check to see what's on a piece of property before a buyer orders, you know, 
That's signs interesting. on the dot. Yeah. That's interesting. So you can do title to go. And um, that way you're sure about what's in your what's in your chain and what you're actually buying before you even put down a down payment. So you oh I see okay so what you would then you would recommend that the title is ordered as soon as possible if not even before. But yeah. that would be the, what the brokers would be doing because the lawyer doesn't even know who this client is at that point. Right. Well, if you go and you're looking to buy a piece of property and the broker doesn't have the old title report. You can actually go online and order a title to go yeah. and get everything for like two and a quarter mm -hmm. before you invest thousands of dollars into the property to make sure that you there know no exactly what's yeah. on the property. And then your report is all ready to go um, when you're ready to buy. Would you recommend that for um, a large piece of property or for any size property? I would say if you're looking for a condo to buy a condo, you want to check the condo docs and all that. Um, you wouldn't need a full search. But if it's a if it's a but you'd want to know what kind of rules and regulations are in the condo. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the broker was, will have a copy the of the, yeah. the offering plan right. and the declaration, the con condominium yeah. declaration so that you can review that ahead of time and I suggest that. Yeah. But if it's a large piece of property and you're looking to subdivide and or you're looking to have a farm or you're looking to, you know, just enjoy a large piece of property. Yes. For privacy sake. Then I would suggest that they order a title to go so that they have complete knowledge of the property before they they go to, you know, before and, they put their down payment and down. And who would be recommending that? <laughs> I always the recommend broker? that. Yes, but you the you don't meet these people until Yeah. Until so the real estate brokers. So yeah. I'm working with real estate brokers uh -huh. now encouraging them. Mm -hmm. to do that. But homeowners can ask for that. If they know to do it. Yeah. yeah. But Which is one of the reasons why we're having a show. Right. And you're asking me about first-time home buyers, So we have to have educated first-time home buyers exactly. to know enough to do that. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I guess it may be a pamphlet that the brokers could hand them out and say, these are things that you could do before. Right. You. That's a good idea. Yeah. We'll have to work on that, Nan. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. So um, basically what you're saying is put together a good team. Yes. You want to have uh, an attorney that you feel comfortable with. And we'll an attorney that gets back to you. And will spend time with you. Or right. at least the staff will spend time with you, a knowledgeable staff. I mean, there are many attorneys whose staff aren't allowed to answer one question. Right. They always have to get back to you. But then there are others um, who have... Um, staff that's been around for a long time and it at least can answer the basic questions like what's happening with the file or going on right. but then there are others that can give you good advice you know from their own personal knowledge exactly not legal advice but and people that you know respond to you if you have a question yeah you know yeah. Or, or and that and that will work with your real estate yeah. person yeah. I mean you really have to have a team right our office always calls back we yeah. make a major effort to call back yeah when people are going through, this is, buying a home is the single most important investment that most Americans make in their entire life. Right, most do, yeah. Yeah, and if you have um, an attorney that's not getting back to you, or a real estate broker that's not answering your questions or your needs, or you're working with a bank that, you know, you're just another number, that's right. not a good situation. Or you you want to make sure right. you're comfortable You don't want to have to your meet team. your attorney at the closing. No. Sometimes it happens just out of circumstance, but that's not the, the norm. That shouldn't be the norm. So any crazy things that you remember from <laughs> your past experience getting involved with title that have happened to you? Oh, well, I, I, I certainly remember with you probably when one of our first titles together when um, uh, my client was selling a house and they had built a pool when they owned it. And my client was going through the paperwork, and she saw the satisfaction for the loan on the for the pool, right? And said, "Oh, I'm not going to need this," and she <laughs> threw it away. And then when the title came, uh, there was a a second mortgage on right. the house, and uh, and it was for the pool. <laughs> it was for the pool, and she threw and away the satisfaction. And it wasn't satisfied, and she had thrown away the satisfaction, and w we had to put money in escrow, if I recall, and. Um, and we had to bring an action in court 
to get it yep. off the record. Yep, to get yeah. it off the record because everybody. So don't throw away those. Everybody papers. had gone out of business. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do yeah. remember that. <laughs> well, what I, about that second mortgage? You just I do remember that one. I thought that was satisfied. Which brings me to another idea. Well, which is if a seller is going to sell their home, yeah. it's good for them to get a title report from the date that they purchased. So they can see if there's any mortgages that haven't been satisfied, even before they list their house. Right. It's also good on the municipal searches. Now, there is something every municipal, every municipality charges to give you a copy of the CO to give you a violation search and a street report. But if you, as a private citizen, go, you can do what's called FOIL. Yeah. It's a Freedom of Information Act, under the Freedom of Information Act, where you can request to see your file, to see if there's any open building permits, mm -hmm. and you can look there for free. Yeah. So I suggest that any sellers, they should run a last owner search to make sure all the mortgages or the refinances that they've done while they've owned the property, they're all properly satisfied, and go and foil the municipality to make sure that all their COs and everything is in order. This is to prevent a last minute. Uh, right, because you if you do it when you list yeah. your home and you get all your everything in order before you go to list your home, when you have a buyer, you're not going to be sitting there running around trying to figure out how to get this mortgage satisfied. Or how to even get the CO for the uh, wood stove that you put in. Exactly. And didn't get a permit for Exactly. Or got a permit for it and didn't close the permit. And basically, if you go and work with the building inspector before there's a problem, yeah. they're, they're much good. more gracious. Yeah. yeah. If you're they trying are. to sell your house and they're mad at you because you haven't you know, gotten the CO for your wood stove that you put in 10 years ago, then but, they're going to give you yeah, a little bit of a difficult a problem. Especially if you got a permit. Uh, originally, if you got a permit, they'll pester you sometimes yeah. to get the CFO because they want you to close it within a year or you have to pay an extra fee. Exactly. And otherwise, if you didn't get the CFO, then you've got to go through the whole inspection, make sure it's up to code. And it would have to be up to code what code is now, not what code is when was, when you when yeah. you originally did it. So yeah. it's a good idea to go yeah. down and you check anyway. I want to get stuck in any of that. <laughs> so yeah. I know, I'm remembering back about some challenges, and one challenge came for me when that? I when I bought um, my house on Lakes Road. Oh yeah, I remember that house. You remember that yeah. house? So at any rate. Um, this was before I was even in the title business. Mm. I was buying a house on Lakes Road. And I went to close on the house, and everything was fine. And then later on, I found out that I didn't have half my dock. So basically what had happened is, and this you have to be very careful on. That was across the street. It was across yeah, the street. I had half the dock across the street. It was a separate street, lot, but not the whole, it? it was a yeah. separate lot. What happens a lot of times is people will buy a piece of property and they'll have a survey or, you know, old survey, they, they get a hold of an old survey and um, they read in the old survey, right? Well, after the people had bought the house originally, they may have gotten another piece of property right. nearby. Right. And it was adjoining, and it was added to it, so they really own both deeds. It was two separate deeds. Two separate deeds. Yeah. They bought at two different times, yeah. but they are contiguous. So what happens is, when they go to convey, sometimes they only pick up the one deed and yeah. only convey the one parcel, and the other parcel is left in the ozone layer. Yeah. So luckily for me, the attorney uh, for the seller had had their client execute a couple of deeds just in case he had a problem. So I was able to get that other lot back. <laughs> he had had him execute a couple of deeds? Just yeah, he actually had it in his, in his oh, great. file. Yeah. Was, just was, in case. Just in case. Yeah. yeah. So well, was, as a seller's attorney, he was smart. Yeah, he was thorough. He That's was an good. old timer. Yeah. So, yeah. very beautiful guy. The old timers were a lot of fun to work with. They're... I just had one recently where um, they bought a piece of property 
and they went later and bought a 30 by 50 foot piece right. that actually was, the, the property was shaped like that. A flag. Yeah. And then they bought this other piece to add on to it. Well, they went and they refinanced, and when the bank refinanced, they only used the one deed, so it was missing that 30 by 50 foot piece in the mortgage. They got foreclosed on. They never mortgaged that 30 by 50 feet, 30 by 50 foot piece, so they still are actually entitled to that piece. <laughs> and the other people who bought from the foreclosure have title to the other piece. So you really need to be careful. Yeah. 30 That's, by 50, that wouldn't really be enough to put a house on. No. Yeah. But it was, I think they needed it because of the way the driveway went. Uh-huh. A lot of people are buying houses now without surveys, and I don't recommend that. I always try to recommend that. And, and uh, people say, well, the last people had a survey. And I have to remind them that just because the last people had a survey, that doesn't mean there weren't changes since then. And the survey isn't the surveyors insurance doesn't cover the new people. No. It covered the old people. But yeah. you can if you have an old survey, you can get that survey recertified yes. to you, which is less yeah. expensive. Yeah. Also, if you go back to the old surveyor, if they do an update, it's less expensive than if yeah. you get a, a, yeah. another surveyor yeah. to do the whole survey yeah. over again. Basically, we all have to live to be a couple hundred years old so that we can keep following up with these transactions that have been going on <laughs> so we can go back to the old records. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why I keep all my files. <laughs> yeah. I was nowhere to go. So That's great. Yeah. Anyway. We, we've started um, getting rid of old files, and now we've modified it so that we try to keep the real estate longer at least the titles research exactly. and, the, and the deed and I mean and the deed and the uh, uh, survey so we try to keep all those things which goes to another thing that I want to tell everyone that buys a house when you get your title policy that's one of the most important yeah. things that you have don't lose that it. in your survey yeah. do not lose them put yeah. them in a safe deposit people box. so many people have no idea where they are yeah. and other times th another thing that's hard to get which you mentioned earlier is the prospectus and the bylaws and the amendments exactly. for a condominium it's amazing yeah. how many people it's 200 and something dollars to get a copy of those well, it's, it's hard to get it's very expensive but you can they're online so there is a way a that you can online. order yeah. them online yeah. Yeah. Some of the older ones. I'm I'm working now with a property up in Sullivan County, and um, we need a copy of the bylaws for the it's for the association, right. and it's an association. So everyone in their deed has to follow the rules and regulations of the association. Mm -hmm. And the girl now that's looking that owns the property, she's thinking possibly of doing. Um, you know, a weekly rental because it's right next to where they put in that new casino. Mm -hmm. So it would be a perfect location to rent out weekly, but we have to review the bylaws in order to see whether or not we're in our rights to be able to rent out on a weekly basis. Mm. So um, now I have to order a copy of those bylaws and it's going to cost. Yeah. It's going to cost because it's going to be a lot of pages. Some of the clerks are char were charging 25 cents a copy, which isn't too bad. Now Orange County just upped it to 50 cents a copy. Yeah. So that's yeah. A, that's expensive. Yeah. So keep your paperwork. Right. <laughs> right. And also people that are buying on a shoestring have to really have a little bit of extra a money set aside so that they can um, they can these there are unexpected things that happen no matter how thoroughly you try to be there they may have to put out a little extra money right and another thing you mentioned about first-time home buyers um, you have to review what this thing is going to cost and you often don't have any idea what the bank is going to have for their right. proceeds and so on but you, Explaining the adjustments for taxes and so on exactly. is very important because they don't realize that the bank is going to ask for a whole year's taxes in advance plus three months for escrow. Exactly. And um, 
they need to know that. Well, that's why you need a good attorney. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's the only reason. So no. ask around. And, yeah. You know, Nancy's Stop. right in Washingtonville. You can give her a call. What's your number there, Nance? 845-496-0355. Right. And I'm right here in Goshen, so if you want to do a title to go, right. you can give me a call at 845-294-7500. I'll have to say that you, your company, as you run it, is one of the most thorough, conscientious Thank companies you. that I've ever worked with. Well, we care. Yes, you do. We really do, and so do you. And that's what the important thing is. Yes. Find an attorney that doesn't just have a big office and that has, you know, a lot of staff that they have to pay for. You know, find an attorney that really cares about you and what you're doing and wants the best for you and will go over everything with you. Is there anything else that you want to say? I'm just thinking of the, of the, um, the, the challenges that we've had between us. And, and, and to try and get a closing taken care of. I mean, if you can, if you can, if you can think of it, it's happened. And, and, and between the title company. Oh and yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you you have to work. The attorney has to work closely with the title yeah. company that's responsive. Right. Because different title companies, they say, oh, that's a problem. We have one right now, where um, uh, we looked at the. At the uh, old deeds, uh -huh. and we saw that there were, there were, it went from brother to sister to brother to sister to mother and father, and there were a number of right. convolutions. And we found out that this one person wasn't on the last deed, and she had been deeded fifty percent of the property. And so we're you're the buyer's 50%. attorney. We're the buyer's attorney. We were looking at fifty percent because two brothers owned fifty fifty percent. No, one brother owned fifty percent, and it looked like. This other brother had bought it with either his wife or his sister. Or, you right. Know, and there was no mention of this woman. And the lawyer just said, let the title company figure it out. <laughs> I said, I would rather not do that. No. Right? Yeah. So no. we did find out that uh, that the, the, it was the wife and she had passed. But the lawyer didn't know that. We right. had to do our own. We had to do our own research. And that wasn't really our job at that point. Exactly. It was the other fellow should have told us what was going on. But he was too busy. Oh, he See, the way do, he didn't do that's another thing. Find a lawyer who does a lot of real estate. Right. Otherwise, um, they don't know the questions. Right. You and just, they don't it, know the answers. You can't help it. <laughs> you can't help it until you've did it, done it a while. Right. You, you know that you know you have to have the experience and there's always something new that comes up. Yeah. You have yeah. to have somebody that's really on top yeah. of it. Yeah. And a good staff helps too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the way that they've worked it now is if you have a title report yeah. and there's a question, a lot of the issues that are in the back can be covered by just giving the policy, which is another reason why it's so important for you to keep your title policy, because it can take care of airship issues. It sure, can because you can go back to the back to the, to the previous title company, and, and if they've insured it, right. it's up to them to, to provide the proofs. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Nan. Thank you. Seth Riggs, who trained Stevie Wonder, Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson. He, you know, trained me in a technique that uh, to this day is, uh, you know, serves me incredibly well. It's, you know, a real master actor is a behavioral scientist. Right. We study human behavior. That's what my, my life has been about, studying human behavior. The work that I do, you know, all the parts that I play, all the writing that I do is all geared towards transformational entertainment that, that you know that actually deals with issues in the world in a way that entertains people